Good evening, everyone. I'm David John Sponheim. And I'm Sarah Hart. And we are America's Third Party. Today we're going to talk about fuel efficiency. We are. We're going to talk about technologies that can build jobs and help our entire production increase, which will help our economy tremendously. And we're also going to talk about conserving gas because that's the best way to help our economy as well. Becoming energy efficient. And that means we have to have vehicles on the road that will get over 40 to 50 to 60, even 84 miles per gallon. Now, first of all, I want to mention to you that battery technology is still in its infancy, but there's a problem. I'm going to show you something that was created in 1983 with a, a nickel cadmium battery in it. This is a Remington Razor. I picked it up in 1983, and I'm going to show you that it's actually the same battery that was in there when I bought it. For some reason, this 30-year-old Razor runs like a charm. And I could do my, my shaving right now with it. In fact, I probably need to shave. This is a 30-year-old battery, folks. And I've used it many, many times. It seems to keep running and running and running. Yeah. You like that? Right, That's a 30-year-old battery. That is very cool. Now, when we talk about automobiles and fuel efficiency, you, or we, propose uh, you want a U.S. auto corporation? I want a U.S. auto corporation. I want to employ batteries like this in the vehicles that will last 30, 40, 50 years. None of these 10-year-old lithium-ion battery packets that are built-in obsolescence has apparently taken us down in that area. I think we can make batteries that really will last. And we can get a car built by the U.S. auto corporation. Imagine a company in America that we build right out of the small amount we own of General Motors. Say we take that 25 to 30 percent we still own of General Motors that we gave them 55 billion for originally. We take that small amount or portion of it and build a U.S. auto corporation that will create a car that will get 100 miles per gallon, plug in overnight and fit four passengers comfortably, four door, with airbags, side impact bags, the whole thing, and then we will see our nation's energy usage drop considerably, which means a huge savings for our economy. Now, the huge. thing is, we don't even need to continue to invest in GM. We could even invest in a brand new American company, like, for instance, there is Elio Mo Motors. Yes, Elio Motors. There's a brand new company we just discovered that is being produced. Uh, they're making a vehicle, and this is it, that'll list for $6,800. This is going to be an 84 mile per gallon vehicle based out of Shreveport, Louisiana. It's a little three wheel vehicle. I wonder how many people it seats. Well, I, you know, I, I would imagine two, two people, two seater, front and back, and I imagine it can go on three cylinders of, 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 of tremendous power for such a light car. It's going to go at incredible speeds. 84 miles per gallon and these, these are tested miles and look at all the different brands they are going to have isn't that awesome well apparently you can get in on the running and get your reservation now for this Elio motors vehicle that should start producing them in one year yes carl i heard that the uh, obama is planning on repealing the 22nd amendment yeah there are people in the democratic party trying to do that which i think is outrageous outrageous we're going to have much better ideas than Obama to fix the economy. Obviously, he can't fix it in five years, so clearly a new guy is on the horizon, and that would be me. I mean, if this company can do it for $6,800, we can definitely create some kind of vehicle for, say, 10000 that's still, American owned. And we can even still sell it for a profit, and we can export it around the world. So imagine a four-seater, not a two-seater, but a four-seater getting 100 miles per gallon. And check this idea out. You know that regenerative braking is really great on the Toyota. And the Honda, the Honda has the IMA, Integrated Motor Assist, which is another technology that uses the, the, the going downhill process to generate electricity, and then they use that to build up battery strength to have an electric engine to assist a car up a hill. Regenerative braking works with the braking system in the Toyotas that the Prius uses. Imagine America making a deal with Japan saying we'll use both of those technologies in exchange for all of the avionics technology we gave them for helicopters. What a deal. You know, and offer that deal with the, the Japanese government saying, hey, you know, we want to use technology without any licensing fees, just like you did with our avionics helicopter use, and it's for the betterment of the whole world. So we put both of those technologies together. This is what Honda and Toyota have not done. They have not fused those two technologies. But if you can imagine 
the cost savings in gas, 100 miles per gallon. Plug it into, the, into a, a standard battery, plug in, right into a 110 volt outlet, and the batteries could be made like this razor. Imagine that, built to last. This is what I'm talking about. I think I've got a little stubble under here I'm going to have to work on. A 30 year old battery and it still goes. And it'll go, this is like the 17th time I've turned it on since I charged it recently. And the battery is just as good as it was when we got it in 1983. So if we don't start getting control, political control, over the powerful oil and coal lobby, cars like this probably won't even make it to the assembly line. Let me tell you about a story about a guy I met down in San Francisco. That sounds a little weird, doesn't it? I well, met this guy down in San Francisco. <laughs> but well, we both met him we together, both met him, and yeah. I'm, I'm really good friends with him, Facebook friends. And yes, you are. Whatever. But, okay, so go ahead. Tell us about... Well, J.L. Mueller is also running for president. I met him He's down... He's actually currently running for governor, for governor in Arizona, so do you vote for him for governor? Let me date vote for David for president. Yeah, and we're still talking about uh, J.L. Mueller. I'll, t I'll put his name in the chat room. You guys can look him up if you want. But he had a car company that was going to go build a car. That, there was an F-250 platform base, but he was going to get a truck that got 75 miles per gallon. And he had ideas for cars similar to that. His whole life got turned upside down. He told me what happened. He had paid his mortgage fully on time. But somehow, General Motors bought his entire mortgage and they evicted him from his own house. This is how things kind of went down for him so he couldn't really build this vehicle that he wanted to do. He wanted to create Mueller, vehicle, Mueller Motors and start making vehicles that could, to compete in the market. Well, General Motors used their power and their influence to uh, tell all of his investors that this guy was not a good person, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And Consequently, Mueller couldn't get his incredible company idea off the ground. Well, this is his website. We're giving you MuellerCompanies.com, and you can see all the work he's put together. But this is a guy who faced the wall of voodoo with oil companies and auto companies, and even General Electric was, was kind of in on this uh, general a attempt to push him out of business, which worked. Now, okay, he's so not the only one. There are tell, other people, too. Tell his story or a little bit more in detail? Well, or? the story essentially uh, started when his mortgage was bought up by the General Motors company, and they, and they evicted he him. Even though he was paying on his mortgage, right. he had not missed any payments. He was not behind in payments or anything like that. Right. So he was actually doing all the things that someone was supposed to do, yep. and um, his his mortgage was bought from under him without any forewarning mm -hmm. and they basically said you have to move out of your house because we own your house now and we don't want to carry the mortgage yeah and this is a problem because if all these little companies want to start up like jail Mueller and build a thousand employee in companies or just like the other company that we're talking about elio motors out of shreveport louisiana making that sixty eight hundred dollar uh, motorcycle slash car that we looked at that is, is going to be a problem. So we need a political party that will make sure that the oil companies and the auto companies and the General Electric Company doesn't influence the growth of new business in America. This is one of the reasons why we're pitching the American people on new technologies tonight. Now we've got a lot of new technologies that we've developed and I want to talk about one of the most important technologies I think in our repertoire which could very well help our nation and that is the technology is all about building desalination chambers around areas that don't have any fresh water. And, and you know, water is going to be the next oil of America's future. Yes, that's definitely, when you, we talk about fuel efficiency, the thing about water and even liquid petroleum mm -hmm. is that we can convert those things into hydrogen. Now, when we're talking about fuel efficiency, can we talk a little bit before, I think we can talk about your ocean pipeline. Um, we're still talking about it. Day, but I think that we can also talk about coal because there's a, an individual that comes into our chat room nightly and he does one of the most dangerous jobs in a coal mine. Oh, okay. Every day he does um, what's called, I believe, the bolt maker he said it was like they call it the widow maker the widow maker because really. he goes in and does one of the most dangerous jobs ever and I, I have to say 
especially with there's been this big democratic push kind of against coal and it's almost like the the democrats don't understand that basically we need coal and coal is the main um is the main reason that we have electricity people yes it would be great to go move toward renewable energy but right now we really are very reliant on coal and the great thing about coal is that coal is produced here in america right exactly uh, the fact is there's effort to end coal electric coal generated electric and i think i have a copy of a tweet I that i made search right there okay a coal generated electricity yes yeah. that yeah. doesn't search my tweets anyway coal generated electricity is something that obama wants to cut and this is a problem this could very well lead to a major uh, shift in our electric grid uh, we're seeing coal electricity supply about 50 percent of all coal of, of all actual electricity being produced in america i couldn't find that link but anyway uh, i did post a link about how obama's planning on shutting down the coal generated electric plants now that's something that could easily trigger a major crisis in every city in america imagine blackouts all across the nation now someone in our chat room just said that david you're onto something that it's possible water is going to be a gold rush. Well, water and the seawater pipeline, something I did want to talk about, is truly the future of, of all of our, our world. If we can possibly develop something that'll desalinate seawater, for instance, that will create it with no fossil fuel energy input, we will be onto something that will benefit everybody and will also be able to make a lot of money as a, as a nation. Now look at what we've concocted here. Back in 2005, Sarah and I put together this concept of the Ocean Pipeline Project. And in it, we basically create modules that are like this image we have here. So the purpose of it is to desalinate water because basically there's water everywhere, but a lot of that water is not drinkable because it is 70% of the earth is water, but of course that's all in the oceans right so in this dome that we're in right now in the middle of the, the dome right in here is the seawater and what happens in each one of these domes and these are only about 10 feet by six feet wide they're really small they can be made and portably transported by rail or diesel truck anywhere in the world we can transport this around the world and they they can be stacked all of these units can be stacked and set up linked together and using solar power and wind power, we're able to push seawater right through these domes. And when the seawater gets in here, it heats up, it's a sealed system, and it heats up to about 150 degrees. Then we see desalination occur in the seawater, and all these little, little molecules go right up into the upper section, and then drops of fresh water drop down to the troughs on both sides, and then we hold the fresh water separate. This is going to be an incredible solution to store and reservoirs of fresh drinkable water. And this water is pure, absolutely pure. So I think a technology like this is going to require the power of the presidency to make happen. I'm going to need to talk to railroad executives and talk about running a parallel line using the easements of the rail lines to run a parallel water line. But this technology is breaking. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Please join us live every single weeknight where you can chat directly with us. Thank you so much and 